Charlie and, and Sinclair just going to continue to see how they work together, how they move off the ball up top against this North Carolina Courage back line who has some really talented players. Underway here in Cary, North Carolina between the North Carolina Courage and the Portland Thorns with Anna Witte. I'm Corey Cohen. Thrilled to be joining you on this NWSL Super Saturday presented by Ally. Portland wearing white on the road, North Carolina wearing blue at home. It's also Pride Night here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Last Saturday in June. Two of the best clubs in recent history facing off. Here's Simone Charlie. Headed up by Kaylee Kurtz. And an early corner on the way for Portland. And Portland putting on the pressure, the North Carolina Courage, very early in this game, trying to attack down these flanks, trying to put pressure on these North Carolina back lines early. Here's Megan Klingenberg. Sent back out to Kling. Chance Sinclair was there, cleared away by the Courage. These two organizations have won the NWSL championship. If you count North Carolina Courage, their history as that's caught by Casey Murphy, you count their history previously as the Western New York Flash, no other organization has won the NWSL championship since 2015. These have been the dominant clubs in recent years. And if that fact doesn't tell you why these teams are so dominant, I don't know what will. And what makes this game such a must watch is they both love to play each other because they know it's always gonna be, both teams are always gonna get each other's best. Both coaches we spoke to, Mark Parsons of Portland and Paul Riley of North Carolina, when we talked to them, they expressed how much they love this rivalry, and they both consider it a rivalry, a friendly rivalry, there's no bad blood, but because of the success that these two organizations have and how well they play against each other, because they both really truly feel this is best against best, should be an exciting matchup. Here's Crystal Dunn. The superstar, former MVP of the league, and former Courage player. And Crystal Dunn really has shown why she is such a talented player, talented player, a coveted Wika player. Wika takes a shot, what a save! The parry from Casey Murphy. And the Portland Thorns putting these balls in the box and taking these shots early without the North Carolina Courage stepping to them. Here's Cuica, who took the last shot. Rodriguez plays it to Cuica. The fullback strikes again. Murphy is there. Here's the shot from and Cuica, Natalia Cuica. And Cuica just takes it on her own account. O'Sullivan tries to come in and slow down Cuica, but Cuica lifts her head up and sees that there is space. There's an opportunity to take that shot on early. Put Casey Murphy underneath some pressure, make her have to make a, stay, a save in the first three minutes of this game. And it was a great parry from her, sending it wide, not allowing a rebound. And right now, the Thorns aren't letting North Carolina possess this game. North Carolina Courage love to possess this game through the middle of the field with so many talented midfielders getting the ball out wide. Thorns have kept the ball away from the Courage and, and not allowing them to connect more than a few passes. Carson Pickett clears it, but another throw coming for Portland. About 78 degrees here in Cary, North Carolina. Certainly glad this game is being played in the Triangle and not Portland, where it is about 103 degrees. A horrible heat wave has been hitting that region. Make the game virtually unplayable. But fortunately, we are here in Cary. Dunn takes the shot, deflected, and a corner on the way. And the North Carolina Courage step up, not allowing that shot to be threatening from Crystal Dunn, because Crystal gets that to her left foot. And good job by the Courage to come up and defend that. The Thorns working methodically. There's Emily Menges looking for Rodriguez, who cannot get there. 
Rocky Rodriguez, the 27-year-old from Costa Rica, joined this club last year. Has one goal and one assist so far this season. Casey Murphy finds Denise O'Sullivan. Some trouble there from Christine Sinclair. And look for Sinclair tonight to put that pressure on O'Sullivan in that sixth position when she comes back to receive that ball. The Thorns really want to keep the courage in their back half during this game. There is Dabinia. Megan Klingenberg, the Pittsburgh native, former member of the U.S. national team, won the 2015 World Cup. Crystal Dunn. Morgan Weaver, this sends sky high in the midfield. Nice header, finding Rodriguez. Dominguez goes to Klingenberg. Played her college ball not too far from here. Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina. And Klingenberg plays a very high line. Klingenberg loves to get into the attack for the Thorns. Service the ball in, but tonight against the North Carolina Courage, expect her to not step up too much all of the time because the Courage are so quick in transition. And Klingenberg wants to make sure she doesn't get caught off her line. Throw on the way here for the Courage in their defensive third. More pressure from the Thorns. Nice work to find space. Carson Pickett. Forward for Lynn Williams. Again, just recently, this past week, named as an alternate on the U.S. national team squad. Here's a nice run on the right side. Matthias into the box. Cleared. Back to Merritt Matthias. Cuts back. Great defense from Klingenberg. Matthias still going. And a corner on the way for the Courage. And Klingenberg does not allow Matthias to turn up and create a lot of space for herself. Klingenberg is touch tight with Matthias. And even though that turns into a set piece, that could have been a very dangerous service in from Matthias. Denise O'Sullivan from Cork, Ireland. Over 80 caps for the Ireland national team. Ireland not one of the European teams in the Olympics, though, so she will remain with the club for this summer. Carson Pickett to take. Played every minute so far this year. The corner toward the far post, headed up by Sinclair. Some good defense from the striker. Binia picks it up, though O'Sullivan will take. Handball, it'll go the other way. There's Kuika, the Finland national. Spent her last two years as a pro in Sweden, but did come to the States to play college ball at Florida State. Salem. Forward for Crystal Dunn. Some room on the left wing. Thais chases it down. Nice command of the ball. Sinclair tracking back. North Carolina widely, wisely switches fields. They find some room on the left. Dabinia, good defense there from Quika. And Quika does not allow the courage to be quick in transition and allow the courage to build up from that last play. The Thorns really need to try and slow down the courage as they come down the field quickly and not allow them to catch them off guard and, and keep their hips facing towards the courage and slow them down early. Great passing here for North Carolina. Dabinia takes a deflection and Adriana French picks it up off the 
ball for Pickett. And Pickett, one of those players, like you said, has played so many minutes. Such a fit player as well. This North Carolina Courage team really likes to have players who are on the, the peak shape of their lives, essentially, and can come into these games, play a full 90 minutes, and Pickett not only does that, but gets up to box to box. She can play the entire field, has great service, and she hustles so hard. And I think that is one that is one of the qualities that Coach Riley really likes about Pickett is her ability to be a hard-nosed player, but do the grunt work. She was named to the team of the month in the NWSL for May. Here's Simone Charlie, some room on the right. Charlie looking for help, the cross, no one there, and it's cleared. Now here's a chance. Quica, Dunn plays it back. Rodriguez, back to goal. It's Sinclair, Dunn gets a piece, takes the shot, but it's off the mark. And I like that Dunn took the initiative to take that shot on her own. She had that ball on her right foot, took a single touch, and then just took one on against Casey. But there, that space in between Kurtz and Ursek, such a short period of time that Crystal Dunn could, could put that ball on goal. And she does it exactly at the perfect time. And that's what makes Dunn such a great attacker. Is she sees spaces and she sees how valuable time is when it comes to opportunities on net. In the counter. Nice run here. Sam Mewis plays to her left, finding Dabinia. Dabinia into the box. Takes a touch, pick it. Good pressure from Portland all the way back to Abby Ursay. We'll be heading to yet another Olympics. Into the box, Lynn Williams too high. And Lynn Williams loves to receive those balls into the box. She's so good with her head. So those types of balls in from the outside, Matthias puts that ball right on top of the six. And Lynn Williams had a defender on her. So that ball was really hard to try and get down. Good defending by the Thorns, but Carolina Courage put, put it, keep putting those balls into the 18 and trying to find Williams head. So here's Adriana French, the goalkeeper for Portland, also named to the U.S. Women's National Team. She'll likely be the backup keeper behind Alyssa Nair. Here's Klingenberg. Kaylee Kurtz sends it away. It took a deflection. Will be a throw for the Courage. And Coach Riley spoke about the partnership between Kurtz and Urseg and, and why Coach Riley has Kurtz in that center back position is because she is so fast and she's fit and she's improved a lot over the past year. And, and having a player who's fit, fast, and can run with these thorns forwards is the kind of player that the Courage need in that center back position right now because there's going to be a lot of quick and transition type plays tonight. Rodriguez settles. Plays to Dunn. Crystal Dunn fighting for it. Goes down, no call. Full kick on the way for North Carolina. Fourteenth minute. Slide tackle from Sinclair, wins the ball. Charlie back to Sinclair. Charlie off her chest. Still Simone Charlie. Good defense from North Carolina. And the Courage were able to get that ball out of bounds, high and wide. Yes, it did create a throw in for Portland, but there weren't those second or third opportunities from the, thor the Thorns feet. Another throw for the Thorns. Chance for North Carolina. He was tried to lead a counter, instead back to Portland. Crystal Dunn, wide to Klingenberg. Through ball, 
Looking for Morgan Weaver. Goal kick on the way for the Courage. And this field is one of the biggest fields in the NWSL. So you see the Thorns using the width. They're trying to stretch to the North Carolina Courage and put those balls in to the box from Klingenberg and Queek out wide. Lynn Williams. A poor pass there. Taken away by Klingenberg. Sends it forward. Looking for Simone Charlie. Here's Sinclair. Charlie gets a touch. Crystal Dunn. Good defense there from the midfielder, Denise O'Sullivan. And it's important for O'Sullivan to win those balls from Dunn right there at that point in the field because Dunn has such a good range of passes. We talked about in the open that Dunn is really good at finding those small passes into the attack. Ray Williams, it's a foot race for it. Mengus gets there first. Portland controlling possession thus far. North Carolina looking on counterattacks. Sinclair, heavy touch there. Pick it. Dabinia. Dribbles in, muscled off, and that is a foul. Called on Kuka. And Dabinia taking on several defenders. She's so good with the ball at her feet. And Quika just could not move her feet fast enough and, and drew the foul in a dangerous spot for the Courage to take a free kick. Dabinia, a member of the Brazilian national team, called up for the Olympics. She will not be leaving after today, as all the U.S. and Canadian players will. But she will be off to the Tokyo Olympics this summer. Pickett and Dabinia back. Pickett takes. Headed out. Mewis was on the ground, right where the ball landed. Here's a chance, though. Dabinia settles. O'Sullivan. Salon. And back into the box. A.D. French. A great grab. Over the head of Jess McDonald. And A.D. French comes off her line to receive that ball. A good ball in from the Courage, almost right on top of the six. And A.D. French reads that ball so well, knowing that if she can test Jess McDonald there, she can come down with the ball, rips the ball out from away from McDonald's head and comes up with a big save for the Thorns. Throw on the way for North Carolina. 19th minute here from Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary. And we're seeing a slower game than I expected. I, we're not seeing both teams to try and counter on each other in transition. We're seeing both teams trying to slowly pick each other apart. This game's not moving as fast as we normally see from both of these teams, but rather how are they finding each other into small spaces and, and a slow counter against one another. And it's interesting, normally North Carolina is one of the fastest teams, not in the league, but on the planet. And so far this evening, Portland seems perhaps just a little bit faster. Back when Sam Mewis returned from Manchester City, part of getting her back into this North Carolina Courage style of play was that speed that the Courage play with. And Mewis has done a good job of coming into the midfield and, and helping assist. Headed in the box now clear. Matthias. Took a deflection in the box for the Courage. Played back. Pick it with the shot. Headed by Sauerbrunn. Still Courage ball. McDonald dribbles in. Still going. Again deflected. This time by Sinclair. And well done by Klingenberg to stay with McDonald. Keep her hand around her and not allow her to break free. Jess McDonald couldn't get a good 
debut on goal from that, and Klingenberg staying touch tight with their defender. Pickett through ball looking for Lynn Williams. She was onside. Cuts back to the right. Williams off target. Lynn Williams, again, we mentioned named as an alternate as we take a look at that replay. Great job to cut back, but the finish just wasn't, wasn't there. And Quika is a very good defender, but you can see the Carolina Courage are really attacking the Thorns down that left flank, targeting Quika. Quika needs to keep her feet, stay with her defender, and continue to listen to Mingus. Give her direction and, and stay exactly where she needs to be as these Carolina Courage players come down the flank. And Quika, who's only started once so far this season, getting her second start here tonight, doing a good job stepping into this role and playing good defense against a Carolina Courage team who have some really good forwards. Of those forwards, Lynn Williams scored two goals in seven minutes in their midweek match on Wednesday against Racing Louisville. Paul Riley, when we spoke to him, thinks maybe the pressure's off now for Lynn Williams and she can play more her style, which is just an absolute goal machine. And there's so much pressure leading up to the Olympics. If you're gonna be named for the team, what you need to do better, what you did great. Now that Lynn Williams has been named as an alternate and she can relax and exhale after that, we've seen her step more into her form and, and really be comfortable to try different things and have been successful at those. Charlie gets a touch, back to Sinclair. Way too hot. Sinclair wearing the captain's armband. And Simone Charlie just leaves that ball back for Sinclair, and Sinclair just didn't get her chest over it to really finish that ball, and the ball was bouncing as it came to her, but the Thorns are getting some good looks at net. Through ball, Lynn Williams. Crosses McDonald, saved by French. And that's the Carolina Courage in transition. They find Lynn Williams. Pickett does a good job of passing that ball up to Lynn Williams, making that run, and Jess McDonald on the far side of the field just sees that ball continue to develop. And Williams plays that ball through, and A.D. French does a good job of getting down, saving that ball. But that's exactly where the Portland Thorns need to be careful is those quick balls that they find Lynn Williams, who's got great speed up top. That combination between Williams and McDonald has been so successful. Here's a shot just wide. Nice strike there from Sam Mewis. And Mewis says, why not? There was good shot on goal. She saw that she had a good opportunity and Mewis has such good range in using her laces to try and hit a finesse ball on goal. It's funny, I asked Paul Riley yesterday, what's the key to this winning streak that they're on and a little two game winning streak from last week and his first two words of the answer Sam Mewis pick it with the cross just off target looking for McDonald but a corner on the way for North Carolina. Mewis doesn't only bring talent onto the field and leadership on the field, but also off the field. You can see where she is just such a good leader and she's able to bring people together and having her presence in the middle of the field, knowing that she's knowledgeable at the game and, and having and knowing what Mewis can do on and off the ball is so nice to have, especially with these players like O'Sullivan and Pickett who, who've seen her and have played with her for a while. Pick it yet again to take the corner. She's got two assists so far this season. 25th minute here. It's a short corner. Sent into the box. French punches it. Played all the way back. First half here, still scoreless between the North Carolina Courage and the Portland Thorns. 
Again with Anna Witte, I'm Corey Cohen. Too far and a goal kick on the way. Glad you're joining us on this NWSL Super Saturday presented by Ally. And this for many seemed as a highlight game between two of the best clubs this league has to offer. North Carolina, the reigning two-time league champs. Portland won the NWSL the year before that. You always see these two teams at the top of the standings. Mark Parsons, head coach of the Portland Thorns, believes that these are the two team, best two teams in the NWSL this year, even though Orlando is currently sitting in first. Here's a strike, and it's saved by Casey Murphy. And Urseg was able to recover there to stay with Weaver. Weaver did get a shot, and it was a good look on Murphy. But Urseg recovered, not allowing Weaver to have a wide open shot on net. Mewis, named to the U.S. national team, will depart for the Olympics after this match. Dabinia, Brazilian international. Little give and go. Some good defense from Angela Salem, the holding midfielder for Portland. And Murphy comes all the way out to boot it. And we're seeing both of these teams play really well. The possession is nearly 50 50. It's just going to. The one goal is going to happen is if either team breaks each other or finds each other in transition or finds somebody on their heels. It's a matter of who it's going to be because both teams are playing well in the attack but also on defense. These teams just so evenly matched. And both coaches, when we spoke to them, told us that their clubs play the, their best against the other club. It's always a test for them. It's always a challenge for them. It's always a rivalry for them because of how much they respect each other and how much success they both had. Couldn't link up there. Intended for Dabinia. They are so evenly matched, and even though Orlando is sitting at the top of the table, both Portland and North Carolina have aspirations of finishing the regular season at first, Winning that supporter shield and most importantly, winning the championship at the end of this season. And both teams have a lot of national team players, a lot of players going to the Olympics. So when those players do leave, there are plenty of players on the bench that have an opportunity to really step up and play well and prove themselves a point, a place on this on this roster and potentially a solid place on this roster. I think the Olympics are a great opportunity for those players who normally don't get big minutes during the regular season to get on the field and prove what they have. And Coach Parsons even said, he said sometimes the Olympics is his favorite time to see some of these players coming in, stepping up, and seeing who's going to have a breakout moment. He says it always happens. There's always a few stars who come in during the Olympics times and step up and make a big impact on the Thorns team. These are two of the deepest rosters that you'll find in the league, and both coaches mentioned that. Of, of course, you're going to miss all the players that leave, but it's a great opportunity for a lot of these players. And it's a challenge for these coaches, a great challenge to see how he can mix different players. It's almost like a puzzle, a puzzle to try and mix different players in together to see who can work together, who, who doesn't work well together, and maybe even some players who he wants in different positions to see them working off the ball and on the ball in different ways. The Olympics proves to be a really unique time for the NWSL for those reasons. Mark Parsons was telling us he, he's excited for the challenge. So not an official hydration break, but a chance with Morgan Weaver down for Portland that the rest of the players can get a drink of water again. Very fortunate this game is being played in the triangle where it's about 77 degrees and not Portland where it's about 106 in the Pacific Northwest. 
was a beautiful day, beautiful evening, I should say. It was raining earlier in the triangle, but beautiful evening for some soccer. 106 degrees. Wow, they are, they lucked out. <laughs> Anyone watching in Portland, we salute you and we hope that your air conditioner is working at its fullest potential. Stay cool. Drink some water. <laughs> Absolutely. Always a good tip. Crystal Dunn, again, leaving after this match for the national team. Former member of the North Carolina Courage and such a versatile player. Can play at that fullback role, but also a great goal scorer. In fact, her goal earlier this year, the game winner against Gotham a few weeks ago, number two on SportsCenter. And it's been fun to see Crystal Dunn fit into this starting lineup for the Thorns and playing with Simone Charlie and Christine Sinclair and learning each other's tendencies. And Simone Charlie is one of those players that you want to be on a team's back line and finding that pass over somebody's head. And Crystal Dunn can provide those passes for Simone Charlie to run onto. A great addition to the Thorns team. Absolutely. 28 year old, soon to be 29. She turns 29 in exactly a week on July 3rd. So happy early birthday to Crystal Dunn. 32nd minute here after these teams restart. Still scoreless here at Wake Med Soccer Park in the Triangle, North Carolina. Again with Anna Witte, I'm Corey Cohen. Thrilled you're able to join us on this Super Saturday presented by Ally. And 30 minutes into the first half, not an official hydration break, but definitely a break for these teams to come together and communicate with one another. And right now, tactically, how are they gonna break through one another? Both teams are connecting passes. The possession looks good on both sides of the field. It's just that last pass and those finishes, those shots, and getting the perfect balls into the box. Here's a chance. Crystal Dunn. Just off target. Pick it, the through ball. Thorns get there first. Menges. by Murphy. Casey Murphy, New Jersey native through and through from Bridgewater, went to Rutgers. Was actually part of the trade with Crystal Dunn. She was with the rain, but the different moving parts saw Casey Murphy arrive in North Carolina and saw, saw Dunn leave North Carolina for Portland. Salem. Good pressure from O'Sullivan, still with Portland though. And Portland have the opportunity to allow Klingenberg to step up so high because Becky Sauerbronn is behind her to stay with those defenders or those attackers rather of the Carolina Courage and allow Klingenberg to step up and be closer to the attack because the Thorns really trust Becky Sauerbronn in the back as well as Emily Menges who to combine those two center backs do a really good job of communicating and being solid in the back for the Thorns. Havana Salon. <laughs> McDonald, the cross looking for Williams and it is clear. Meanwhile, there was a, a fascinating statistic courtesy of Dan Lawletta Portland's all-time shutout streak in the regular season is 341 minutes. They have now hit 342 minutes and counting without allowing a goal. I nearly jinxed it there. But Portland, on a three-game win streak, they have been dominant defensively between A.D. French, the back line, Sauerbrunn, Mengis, Klingenberg. They've been stellar. They have not allowed a goal in over 342 consecutive minutes. 
and the Thorns have the privilege to have those players back there who are individually brilliant, but when you put them together, they are so solid. Their communication is on point. Their experience is fantastic. A lot of these players have been in the league for a while. And then you put Quika back there. She hasn't had a lot of experience, but she fits in so well with this back line here today so far. Thorns have a very solid foundation back there, and it continues as you look up the field. Three straight victories for Portland. 1-0 versus Gotham, 3-0 versus Louisville, 1-0 versus Kansas City. And again, they so far they have not allowed a goal against North Carolina. Excellent work by that back line as well as A.D. French. North Carolina, though, on a two-game win streak of their own, and looking to keep it going. They had a clean sheet on Wednesday against Racing Louisville. These teams evenly matched so far. Let's see what happens as we enter the 37th minute. Crystal Dunn in the box. Dribbles the shot deflected. And you, you see McDonald tracked all the way back. Dunn was able to get past Matthias and McDonald just stayed with Dunn and not allowing anything to happen within the 18. Crystal Dunn with a great service. She's known for those great services, was denied by McDonald. Matthias dribbling all the way up. Nobody there. A.D. French to take the goal kick. Was the NWSL goalkeeper of the year in 2017 and 2018. Was out last year with an injury. But has now become a mainstay on that U.S. national team. Hasn't started many matches. But reliably a member of the team. Sam Mewis. Sinclair all the way back in the midfield. We see quite often her track all the way back. Pretty deep for a striker. Shows her versatility. And Matthias right here, she loves putting those balls into the backs, but can she wait for her team to come up with her before her service? Matthias plays to McDonald. The cross deflected and now cleared. Danger is there for Portland. And McDonald was found out wide. She was able to put that ball into the box. And it was contested, but Portland, they stay as a unit, and they were able to clear that ball high and wide, not allowing a second opportunity from the Courage. But both teams looking to play a slow tempo right now. They don't feel the pressure to go to goal right away. It's almost a more methodical game. How are we going to break lines? It really has been a great matchup so far. Incredibly evenly matched. Run here from the Courage. And a goal kick on the way. Matthias finding herself so high up on the field. She's able to put more box balls into the box as we see her taking on defenders. But Matthias is good at tracking back as well. So can the Thorns, when they win the ball, can they try and counterattack maybe on Matthias's side, finding opportunities in pockets where defenders are caught up high? Bristol Dunn. Looking for Charlie, it'll go the other way. 40th minute here from Cary, North Carolina. Dabinia, some room on the left wing. Dribbles in, great cut from Dabinia. Cuts again, the strike saved by French. And Dabinia just taking on players 1v1. Rocky Rodriguez is not an easy player to beat like that. And not only does she beat Rocky, but she splits two defenders with that shot. She splits Quika and Salem. Just couldn't find open netting. 
but Dabinia just so threatening some, from so far out. First minute here, again with Anna Witte, I'm Corey Cohen. Thrilled to be joining you on Paramount Plus, as well as iHeartRadio. Dabinia, great move there to keep possession. Plays it to Lynn Williams. Williams with the cross, McDonald couldn't get a clean strike. And it was good defense from the shorter Klingenberg. Klingenberg staying touch tight, tracking back and not allowing Williams to really move or do anything when that ball comes in from Williams. McDonald's such a hard player to defend Klingenberg. The key is staying touch tight, not allowing the forward to move and really get any range on the ball. Corner on the way. Teams so evenly matched. Great chances for both sides. No goal, but a thrilling first 41 minutes of soccer. If you appreciate quality play. These have been the two best teams in the league in recent history for a reason. Here's the corner from Salem. Headed just over the crossbar. Simone Charlie had a strike at goal. Simone Charlie finding herself completely unmarked on that corner kick. No courage defender there to make sure she doesn't get her head on in and making a run into the box. A good look from Charlie. Charlie playing slightly closer to home. She's from Alabama, went to Vanderbilt. Touch there from Salon. There's a lot of contact there. Foul called against Portland. And Kurtz showing her athleticism as she runs with Charlie, and Charlie is such a fast attacker. Kurtz staying in that foot chase, drawing the foul as a center back. You couldn't ask for anything more. Williams all the way back. Nicely finds her fullback, Matthias. Shipped forward. And the Courage right now playing a box in the middle of the field. The Thorns playing more of a diamond. So there's more lines for the Thorns to have to break. The Courage are trying to break several lines as well. Different formations in the middle of the field can make things a little more tricky when you're trying to beat one another in there. So you're seeing the Thorns playing out wide and the Courage trying not to play through the middle, trying to keep the ball a little more out wide, seeing if they can attack better that way. Urseg sends it forward. The center back for the Courage, member of the New Zealand national team. Urseg, such a great mainstay in that center back position for the Courage. She brings leadership, experience, athleticism, and she's such an easy player to play next to, whether it's Caldwell or Kurtz in that back line. Charlie dribbles left, great defense. And those passes are exactly what the Courage need to break up, and Sloan is known for breaking up those types of passes, and that's what brings she brings to the table that's so valuable for this Courage midfield. It's her ability to read the pass before it happens. Sam Mewis. Such a game changer for the Courage. Sullivan, now Dabinia. She's got Pickett to her left. 
Goes there, pick it with the cross, sent away. Sinclair to lead a counterattack. Looking for Charlie, but sent back to Casey Murphy. Got two minutes of stoppage time here in the first half. Play to Ursaig, came out of retirement for that New Zealand national team. Taken away, ref says it was clean. Here's a chance for Portland, Morgan Weaver. Great defense from Abby Ursaig. Urseg allows Weaver just to have a little bit of space to chase her down. And as soon as Weaver tries to make a move, Urseg makes sure she pushes her out wide and steps up, wins that ball, and it's an easy win back for the Courage. Here's Crystal Dunn. Sinclair got a touch, but some room for North Carolina. Can they counter? Lynn Williams, forward for Dabinia. She cannot get there. And for Urseg, while well, so many of these players are going to be leaving after tonight, any of the U.S. or Canadian national teamers who are on the Olympics, they'll be leaving their clubs after tonight. Dabinia's got some more time. She'll be on the Brazilian national team. Abby Urseg has a tremendous <laughs> amount of more time still with her club before joining her national team. And that's a good thing for the Courage. Her leadership and oh, an irreplaceable player in that back line. She really is what helps this team build up from the back. But Paul Riley does have the privilege of having so many players on the bench that he can sub in when some of these players leave, like Ryan Williams, who had a fantastic game against Louisville. <laughs> Haley Mace, who was solid in the midfield and really starting to come into her own. And having the privilege of having Diane Caldwell, who can fill into Abby Urseg's role is is important for the courage to have. There's the halftime whistle. It is for Saturday, presented by Ally. And the second half has begun between these two premier NWSL clubs. So evenly matched in the first half. We'll see if either side can open up the scoring with a goal. Portland wearing white on the road. North Carolina wearing blue at home. Nice find there to Weaver. The cross. Urseg. Now Charlie takes the shot. Too high. And the adjustments the Thorns made in the locker room was to speed this game up. And Morgan Weaver slotting that ball in. And Urseg trying to clear it. And Charlie just could not get her chest over it. But I like the... The st initial start from the Thorns. I like that they're pressing high early and they're bringing speed and really trying to attack and catch the Carolina Courage on their heels at the beginning of the second. Here's Dabinia, the Brazilian international. For Jess McDonald and a goal kick. Last touch off McDonald. Carson Pickett. Williams gets a touch. Again, scored two goals against Louisville on Wednesday. Looking for Mewis. Salem there. Dabinia has it. Mewis. Get it out for the moment. And now can the Thorns counter right here? Matthias coming out of position to try and keep that ball in the final third. And Weaver able to take on Kurtz by herself. Cuts back. Weaver down in the box. Ref says it's clean. Referee for this one, Natalie Simon. And Salone coming back to help defend that ball, doing a good job in that number six position, hustling back. And O'Sullivan, who is such a fit player, box to box, helps back and build that ball out for the courage. A chance through ball. McDonald offside flag is up, though. A 
ball, a little too direct into McDonald. McDonald just went a little faster than Dabinia anticipated. But these second balls that the Courage are winning in the middle of the field are, are helping them in the attack. McDonald just a little too quick to try and receive that ball in the 18. McDonald certainly offside as we saw that replay. See the size advantage Mewis standing next to Crystal Dunn. Teammates on the national team. They'll both be leaving for Tokyo coming up soon. This pass from Rodriguez to find Salem, now Klingenberg. Weaver cleared and a throw on the way for Portland. alive still with Portland Salem it takes a touch Salem trying to find Crystal Dunn I like that pocket she was trying to find Dunn in in the 18 the courage doing a good job of staying compact and not allowing balls through those slots Dunn the cross Charlie just booted it high and those one-two passes within the 18 are what make, makes Portland dangerous. Urseg staying touch tight to Charlie, not allowing that ball to completely come across her body and, and put a good shot on net. But if the Thorns can continue to put those balls into the box, keep the Carolina team pressed, Carolina pressed in their back half. Here's a strike deflected. Off of Abby Ursay. Here's a chance. Through ball looking for McDonald. Nice defense from Emily Menges. A throw in, though. Carolina wants to take it quickly. Dunn gets there first. Some traffic in the midfield here. Sam Mewis. And coming off her line is A.D. French. And Mewis received that ball and saw McDonald making that run into the box. Just a little too direct, but I like Courage's thought to go forward like that and find McDonald quickly in the attack. We're seeing both teams playing a little bit faster than what they did in the, in the first half of this game. They're trying to find each other on their heels, quick in transition. O'Sullivan. Giving away to Rodriguez. Here's Sinclair. Rodriguez. Through ball, Weaver. Open net, Weaver. Dribbles it back, Murphy back on her line. Sinclair takes a shot, Murphy picks it up. And Sinclair had done right behind her at the top of the 18, looking for an opportunity for a shot. And a good ball in from Weaver. Weaver was able to keep that ball alive. Unlucky shot from Sinclair. Tough there for Morgan Weaver that she didn't have a good angle when Murphy was out and it was an open net. Here's Dabinia. Matthias to her right. Dabinia takes a deflection. Good dribbling here from Klingenberg. Now out of bounds. Take a look at the replay. And Rodriguez does a good job slitting, slotting Weaver into the box. And Weaver's touch behind Murphy was a little too big. But you see Dunn at the bottom of the screen. She could have been open for a ball right back from Sinclair from perfect one-time shot on net. Still looking for an opening goal. 
Carson Pickett. Mewis, last touch off of Sam Mewis, so a goal kick on the way. A.D. French from Salina, Kansas. Dabinia settles it, looking for Lynn Williams. Williams gets there. The deflection, but a corner on the way for the Courage. And Sloan receives that ball going forward in between that line, between the sixth position, Salem, and the back line of the Thorns. And Williams creates an opportunity for herself, turns it in a set piece for the Courage. Lynn Williams had 12 goals in 2019. Former MVP of this league. There's three goals so far this year. Two of them came on Wednesday. Toward the far post, headed by Portland. It will stay in play. Can be handled by the Thorns. Simone Charlie now. Still going. Nice clearance. And a throw on the way for Portland. The fans here and the Courage bench not too happy. Well read from Kurtz though to step up and clear that ball. Not allowing the Thorns to receive the ball and turn up. Rodriguez. Back to Menges. Pick it now, Salon. Matthias. Some room in the midfield here. O'Sullivan. Now McDonald. Threw ball looking for Williams. Too much behind it, though. And a good find by McDonald, splitting Mingus and Sauerbronn. But Williams wasn't making that run fast enough to get on the end of it. And those are the type of balls the Courage need to keep trying to find. Because Williams is so successful on the ends of those balls. She's got such great speed. She can take players on 1v1. And she's good with the ball at her feet. So keep trying to find those balls into Williams at the top. And I'll let Williams do the work from there. Sullivan. There's pressure from Sinclair. And again, Sinclair, great work on the defensive end. She'll track even much further back. There's Matthias, some room on the right. The cross sent up by Sauerbrunn. Nice work from the U.S. national teamer, co-captain of that squad. She's played every minute of this season, though that will end after tonight when she leaves for U.S. National Team Camp and then the Tokyo Olympics. And right here is a good opportunity for the Courage to get on the end of it. Pickett's crosses are so good into the box. Can a Sam Mewis or a Lynn Williams or even a Dabina or O'Sullivan get on the end of it, try and find themselves unmarked in the box? Pickett to take the corner. It's got some power, four points, and a goal! North Carolina goes up. And who else but Lynn Williams? Her fourth goal of the season. And Lynn Williams, her second time this week, getting the ball in the back of the net from inside that sixth position. And Lynn Williams finds herself completely unmarked. No player from the Thorns are in front of her. Klingenberg tries to step, rather, 
Quika tries to put a foot out in front of Williams, and Williams just does a fantastic job putting herself in the perfect place to convert on a set piece opportunity. And an excellent service on that corner from Carson Pickett. Huge goal for Lynn Williams, who has now scored three goals in four days. Two on Wednesday against Louisville, one tonight against Portland. And that has ended the Thorns shutout streak, which was the longest in history. They had won three games in a row, all without conceding a single goal. And if anyone's to do it, it's the North Carolina Courage. Such a talented team, especially up top with Lynn Williams and Jess McDonald. Here's a chance, A.D. French. A bullet right to her. She made the grab. And Lynn Williams loves to take players 1v1 down the flank, and putting that ball on Adriana French. And that's what the Courage need to do, keep trying to find the Thorns on the heels. But on the other side of the ball, the Thorns need to do the same thing to the Courage. Try and find Urseg or Kurtz out of position and find Simone Charlie in behind. So we were wondering, it felt like only a matter of time until one of these teams scores. There's just so much quality. It was North Carolina that got on the board. And a quality team like the Courage, these set piece opportunities are so hard to give away to teams that are so good at converting on them. And the Courage, they know whenever they get an opportunity like that, so close to goal, a corner kick or a, a free kick, are typically going to be on the end of it. Vanna Salon. Mewis Williams takes the strike. And just a roller toward French. And Mewis turned that ball, a good turn. Williams rather turned that ball and a good turn. The ball seemed like it got stuck underneath her foot a little bit. Here's McDonald, edge of the box. Not much behind it, back to McDonald. Way off target. And keep looking for Dabinia to try and make those runs in behind. She's, you could see her trying to want it, even on that last play. Wants it from Williams to try and see if she can get a ball. Mingus and Sauerbrunn need to be careful of what Dabinia is doing, moving side to side on the back line. Klingenberg entered today questionable with a left hip injury. She has exited this match in favor of Madison Pogarsh. So Klingenberg does not 90 minutes fit tonight. Simone Charlie down at the moment. Nice round of applause here. From Wake Med Soccer Park. Again, a gorgeous evening for some soccer. And Klingenberg, such a good defender for this Portland team. One of those players who creates chances for them often. We'll take another look at the goal, the difference here. Carson Pickett. So it was headed back. Pickett was not credited with an assist because it was headed by a Portland player. And but those balls... Finished. Those balls you put on top of the six right there that are so close to the keeper, but just far enough where she can't come off her line and grab it are the most dangerous balls you can put into the box. And Quika missed her mark. She wasn't touch tight to Williams, wasn't goal side of Williams, and allowed Williams to just put a simple touch on that ball to find a goal. Pick it with as great a service as you can deliver without getting credited for an assist. So Simone Charlie able to walk off on her own accord. It is Pride Night here at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. If you've noticed the Pride flag numbers on the back of the Courage uniforms. Here's 80 French, 63rd minute here from North Carolina. 1-0 lead for the Courage. Again with Anna Witte, I'm Corey Cohen. Joining you on this Super Saturday. Five games in a day. 
from the NWSL, presented by Ally. And we are thrilled to be joining you for this one. Two of the best clubs in the league. North Carolina won the past two championships. Portland won it the year before that. They are where many clubs aspire to get to. The level of success that Portland and North Carolina have year after year. Here's McDonald, saved by French. And so much credit to Coach Riley and to Coach Parsons, who have done a great job of fielding players and going and getting players, filling roles when they're missing players, that have been such a big piece for a long time, and, and getting players to fill that role in, bring different unique balance to this, their teams and allowing them to be at the top of the standings consistently for years in this league. And again, Mark Parsons said he believes these are the two best teams in the NWSL. And that it's a great test for both sides. And both coaches said they love playing the other team because their side brings their best against the top quality. And tonight we're seeing that. The possession is still equal. North Carolina Courage are up by one goal. So the Thorns are still very much in this game and the game is definitely divided. And they're always, both teams know they always have to bring their best to this pitch whenever they're playing each other because these games always get decided by the small details, the small mistakes or the small successes. Portland on a three-game win streak. All shutouts, all clean sheets against Gotham, Louisville, and Kansas City. But they trail against North Carolina, who could get a three-game win streak of their own. They've won two in a row against O.L. Reign and Louisville. Lynn Williams, named as an alternate on the U.S. national team. Here's Matthias. Sent forward, kept alive, but cleared by Salem. Here's a chance, pick it all the way up. Nice work by Charlie coming back. And French clears it. And the Thorns know that those balls in from Pickett are so dangerous and they don't want to allow her to keep putting those balls into the box. So Charlie dropping off and, and helping give support to her team. Here's Pickett looking for Williams. Second goal. The brace for Lynn Williams. Four goals in four days. And a fantastic ball from out wide. Davinia allows Sam Lewis to get that ball out wide and a cross in from Pickett with her left foot. Pickett's balls are so dangerous. Finding Pogart off Williams and there always needs to be a mark on Williams whenever that ball comes into the box. Williams gets her head on it. A fantastic second goal in this match from Williams and from the same player, Pickett. What a combination. Lynn Williams from Carson Pickett. Just a brilliant performance. On Wednesday, she scored two goals in seven minutes. In this game, it was about nine or ten minutes. But my goodness, Lynn Williams is absolutely on fire. And I think you can safely say now that Lynn Williams has really caught into who she is. She's really caught onto her form and just as confident as who she is as a player on this field. She finds herself in perfect places and trusts the players around her. And when we spoke with Paul Riley, he mentioned that he thinks maybe it was some of the, the pressure with the Olympics coming up. And is she going to be an alternate? Is she going to make it at all? Is she going to be in the 18-person roster? But once that happened, that she could play a bit more freely. She could play like herself, and she could play without that pressure. And since then, she has been remarkable. Two goals on Wednesday night, now two goals on Saturday night. And you wonder if Vladko Andonovsky might be wondering if he should have named her as an alternate 
or on the 18-player roster because she has been a machine when it comes to goal scoring this week. And for Carson Pickett, she did not get credited with the assist for the first goal because it took a touch off a Thorns player before Williams finished. She definitely gets credit for that assist. But that it first is her third of the season. And that first goal was created from Pickett and that ball in from Pickett, even though it did skid off a of Thorns head, just a good buildup from the courage. And, and Pickett just proving this, her time with the courage. She has done a good job of, of playing that solid right left back position, putting in good services, tracking back, being in the attack, working hard in the defense, and playing so tight to Ursag. In this Thorns game, it was important. That Pickett stays very tight to her center back as well as Matthias. And, and Pickett still found opportunities to get high as well. Both goals undoubtedly created by Pickett and finished by Williams. An excellent combination. Substitution on the way for both sides. Here's Matthias for the courage. Good defense there. Centered. The shot. It was wide. So number 23 coming in for both sides. Kristen Hamilton out of the University of Denver comes in for North Carolina. And for Portland on the substitution, we see Yasmin Ryan. Sam Mewis exits for North Carolina. So that is the last that Courage fans will see of her until after the Olympics. After this match, she departs for the US national team and then the Tokyo Olympic Games. And Mewis will certainly be missed on this Courage team. Just brings, obviously, so much experience and so much talent and allows a lot of her teammates to play calm and, and know that Mewis is back there to help them as well. And, and Mewis, just such a great player for this Courage midfield, surely will be missed throughout the Olympics. Yasmin Ryan, a forward out of TCU. Who has now entered the match. She comes in for Weaver. And Yasmin Ryan, a player who hasn't played for this Thorns team at all. So seeing how she can get into the mix, a versatile player out of TCU, how she can get into the mix and play with these Thorns players, adding a different player into the lineup can be a lot sometimes, especially when you're playing a team like the Courage, who are just so solid through and through. How Ryan can fit into this lineup and how she can play well with this Thorns team will be a good evaluation for Coach Parsons. She was the Thorns' first draft pick in this year's NWSL draft, number six overall. Here's a chance, McDonald to Dabinia. Dabinia chips it ahead. Matthias can't keep it alive. Lynn Williams, who has scored two goals tonight and two on Wednesday. First ever Courage player to score multiple goals in consecutive games. That's that courtesy of Dan LaLetta. 72nd minute here. 2-0 lead for North Carolina at home. As things stand, they would leapfrog Portland and move into second place. And we're seeing Portland starting to sit back a little bit, allowing the play develop to them. We haven't really seen Portland get into the box, put crosses in since the beginning of the second half. Havana Salon. Member of the Jamaican national team. Here's a through ball for McDonald. 
Menges is back. McDonald takes the strike, and it's wide. Menges was able to recover pack, and even though Menges couldn't keep McDonald going towards the end line, keeping her towards the sign lane, Menges does a good job of not allowing anything too threatening on Franch and goal. But a great ball in, and McDonald's already making that run and so good at those 1v1 situations. So much speed from McDonald, just couldn't put that one on net. Crystal Dunn. Here's a chance, Yasmeen Ryan. Back to Dunn! And cleared away. So close for the Thorns. And a player still down for the Courage. It's Denise O'Sullivan. Holding her ankle and you hate to see that. And Ryan stepping on to the pitch and playing such great soccer, creating opportunities for the Thorns. And it looks like Dunn and O'Sullivan collided there in the box. O'Sullivan took the brunt of that situation. Good to see O'Sullivan walking it off and, and being up because O'Sullivan, such a tough player. If this doesn't show you she's a tough player, I don't know what will. One of my favorite players to watch, especially in that midfield position, in that sixth position, her ability to recover, but also put fantastic balls into the attack. Just such an, a great overall fantastic, versatile player in the NWSL. And right there is just not an opportunity where the Portland Thorns need to turn the ball over. Pogarch is right is wide open. Receive that ball if you're Pogarch. If you have to play the ball back to try and switch the point of the attack, that's okay. But the Thorns need to keep the ball. 100%. 76th minute now. With Anna Witte, I'm Corey Cohen. Joining you on this NWSL Super Saturday presented by Ally. It's a two nil lead for North Carolina over the Portland Thorns, two of the best clubs in the league. Enter today second and third in the standings. North Carolina, the two time reigning league champs. Portland won the year before that. And Portland, the reigning NWSL Challenge Cup champions. Two of the premier clubs in this league. Just a thrilling matchup that almost everyone who follows this league had circled on the calendar. And it has lived up to the hype. Lynn Williams certainly has. Cleared away by Becky Sauerbrunn. Great work from the anchor of both the Portland Thorns as well as the U.S. national team. And Williams really taking it to Cuica up top, putting a lot of pressure on that defender. Sinclair, 38 years old, nearing 300 caps. She will get there in the Olympics. She leaves after tonight to join Canada before they head off to Tokyo. And a player that we haven't talked about for a, a player we haven't talked about for the Thorns really is that they're missing Lindsay Horan in that midfield position. Her speed and her ability to see the game, her knowledge of the game, and everyone knowing how she plays. It's definitely been missed by this Thorns team. But taking precautionary, letting Haran rest for this game. Here's a chance. Ryan got a touch. 
And that'll be a foul called. And a yellow issued to the rookie, Yasmeen Ryan. I like it. I like that Ryan is stepping up on the field and doesn't feel intimidated. She goes hard into these tackles. She's stepping up in big moments. She's creating opportunities for the Thorns, and she's playing well with her new teammates. If you're Coach Parsons, you're happy with what you're seeing from the new player in Ryan. So a couple, couple substitutions. O'Sullivan will exit, and Ankara James, known as Haas, the Wales international, will enter. Jess McDonald will also exit for the Courage. For Haley Mace. Mace who scored the brace a couple of weeks ago. Meanwhile for Portland, a couple substitution. Substitution, Celeste Bure will enter for Angela Salem. And Simone Charlie also exits. Marissa Everett will come in. So a handful of substitutions there. Everett in for Charlie, Bure in for Salem on Portland, and then James in for O'Sullivan and Mace in for McDonald, North Carolina. In the 79th minute of the play, coming out of the game number eight, it's Denise O'Sullivan. And James, a player who's been playing next to O'Sullivan for a lot of this season, who has done a good job of playing side by side with O'Sullivan because she's so good at reading the play and picking off balls in dangerous situations. James can track back, but she can also create opportunities in the attack for the Courage. Oz James, just her second appearance with North Carolina. This is her first ever U.S. club. Again, she's a Welsh international, sort of introduced to the NWSL by Jess Fishlock as there's a little too much contact. And Paul Riley told us she's still not quite at the level they need her to be for a full 90 minutes. And Pogarch, utilize her. and Pogarch running that ball down, James tracking that ball down as well. You can see both of those players going at it there, wanting to win that, wanting to win that ball. Sinclair. Matthias tracking back and sends it out. Meanwhile, across the league, and you can cover your ears or lower the volume for uh, 20 seconds if you don't want to know, but across the league, currently the Houston Dash are up 2 0 over Orlando, the pride in first place entering this weekend. Now, if things hold, Orlando will still be in first place, but both North Carolina and Portland would be right on their tail. Orlando with 15 points, North Carolina with a win would have 13. And Portland, even with a loss, would still have 12. And two to zero against the, the Pride. It just shows you how crazy this league is, day in, day out. You never really know what's going to happen when it comes to these games. And that's what makes this league so fun to watch is these games are always different. There's, you never know who's going to win based on talent, based on personnel, based on tactics. It's always a different game and a different, seems like almost a different lineup every time they step on the pitch to some degree. It has been a thrilling season so far and will continue to be throughout this 2021. Sinclair with the touch, all-time leading scorer, men or women on the international level. This is headed, here's Ryan in her debut. Good defense, Sinclair though has to send it back. Rodriguez, forward. 
The Courage trying to solidify this win right here, putting all the players behind the Thorns. And the Thorns really not able to do anything there. But Ryan received the ball at her feet, tried a little, few too many things before trying to take a shot or an opportunity or even look for an opportunity against the Courage. Couple heads from the Thorns. A little back and forth here. 84th minute, still the 2 0 lead for the Courage. In Portland, after this game, they will be losing Crystal Dunn to the Olympics. They'll be losing Becky Sauerbrunn to the Olympics. They'll be losing AD French to the Olympics. And they will be losing Christine Sinclair to the Olympics. They would love a win before those four sensational players leave. And right now is where the Thorns really need to dig in deep and try and build, try and connect, and try and communicate to try and put something on net in these last seven minutes, last six minutes. Substitution on the way for the Courage. Here's Dunn with the cross. Great pressure from the Portland Thorns. Menges coming all the way up, as well as Sauerbrunn, who you can see in your screen. All 10 field players for the Thorns. Desperate for a goal. Here's Dunn. Matthias on defense. And that will be a foul called, it looks like. And a yellow. I believe. No, no card. Excuse me, I, it looked like Natalie Simon went for her pocket. But still a foul. And a dangerous set piece coming up for the Thorns. And Matthias running for 85 minutes in the game, staying side by side with Crystal Dunn, not allowing her to put anything into the box, drawing a foul. But that's okay, Matthias doing a good job out wide, running with Dunn. Eighty-sixth minute. If Portland, if they want a point on the road, it's got to start here. Over the crossbar. Sinclair with the header, but not on target. And a good run in by Sinclair. Pogarch puts that ball right on Sinclair's head, and Sinclair just couldn't get that ball down and put some, something threatening on Murphy there. Final minutes here. And you'll see the Carolina Courage dropping off, not wanting the Thorns to create any opportunities here in these last minutes. Sent in and caught easily by Casey Murphy. Paul Riley mentioned he feels safe with Murphy. Anything, even though she's new, anything in the air, any cross, he feels great, extremely confident in her. And Murphy brings that height to this Courage team in that back line. She's able to jump up and receive balls and come off her line and bring down whatever she needs to do for the Courage. But with this Courage back line, Murphy doesn't see much, ac must, much, ac rather much action often. Substitution on the way, a pair of them for the Courage. Speck will enter for Dabinia. This is a tactical substitution. Speck, more of a defensive player. So Dabinia comes off. Another great game for her. Didn't get a goal or an assist. But such a creative, dynamic player. Dabinia really trying to create those opportunities up top for the Courage. You saw her trying to run across the Thorns back line and look for slots in behind. Dabinia, always one of those players you want on the field defensively to help build. And just for people to follow and for hustle as well. She hustles so well on and off the ball. 
And she will be leaving, not after this game, but she will be off for Brazil and the Tokyo Olympics. And Ryan Williams comes in for Merritt Mathias, like for like, both right backs. Williams actually started the match on Wednesday. Eighty eighth minute now. Portland running out of time to score that first goal, let alone a second. They want to walk away with a point. And this team this game is still tied up. Statistically, both teams are possessing 50% of the game. Both teams have 16 total shots. However, the Carolina Courage have really pulled away and, and really converted when it was important. There's Becky Sauerbrunn, captain of the U.S. national team. Throw on the way for the Thorns. Pogarsh takes. Three-year-old out of Rutgers. Here's Pogarsh. Nice grab from Casey Murphy. And a good ball in from Pogarsh, right on top of the six there. No Florence players there to convert, and Casey Murphy coming off her line and reading that ball in really well. Kristen Hamilton, all-time leader at the University of Denver in goals and points. She's named to the second 11 in the NWSL in 2019. Good defense there from Portland. Now in the 90th minute, only be a handful of minutes of stoppage time, so time really running out for the Thorns. It's looking more and more like it'll be a 2-0 victory for North Carolina. So four minutes of stoppage time. And we've seen such a tight competition between both of these teams, trying to break each other's lines tactically. And both teams have done a good job defending. The Thorns have done a good job defending. There's just been a few things that have broken down that have led down led to two Lynn Williams goals in this game. And Williams continues to hustle. You saw her up top trying to tra chase that ball down from Sauerbrunn. Final minutes here. North Carolina holding on. Looking to improve to a three game win streak. And they are happy if this ball just slowly rolls. Right now, if you're the Courage, you just want to keep everything in front of you. You don't want to allow really anything past your nine. Just putting that pressure on the Thorns back line, not allowing anything into the midfield or even out wide to put something in box. French. Final, perhaps the final chance for Portland if they can build from the back. Menges. A little too much there. Urseg tracks. Again, North Carolina just keeping everything in front. Their battle is largely against the clock as they close in on three points at home. A win for the Courage moves them into second place. And in striking distance of first. Williams sent it forward. Haley Mace 
Scored two goals as a substitute a few weeks ago. It was the Mace Brace. And the throw for Portland. And Portland quick in transition here. Do what you can to find another opportunity in this game. Connecting passes and trying to get things up top quickly is what the Thorns need to do and trying to catch these Courage defenders off their line and on their heels. Final minute and change, Christine Sinclair. It'll go the other way. Sinclair, the legend, about to pass 300 caps for the Canadian national team, 38 years old, the captain of club and country, all-time leading scorer. This will likely, you can never say never, likely be her final Olympics. She'll try to bring a deep run and another medal to the Canadians. And she will leave after tonight, as well as the three other American national teamers on this Portland squad. For North Carolina, Sam Mewis leaves after tonight. Lynn Williams as an alternate will not. She'll have a little bit more time with her club, which I'm sure Paul Riley is thrilled about. Here's Crystal Dunn, deflected. And there is the final whistle, a 2-0 victory.